Hello everyone. Our ancestors believed in favorable and unfavorable times of day. It was believed that the transitional moments of day and night, midnight, noon, dawn, or sunset, were times when particularly evil spirits became active. One of these dangerous creatures was the Midnight Witch in Slavic mythology. The Midnight Witch was a malevolent spirit that primarily attacked children, sometimes only newborns, deprived them of sleep, and caused insomnia and crying. It could transform into a bat, caterpillar, bird, or sometimes a long-haired woman in black clothing, and enter the house through a window or door. It would stand at the head of the child's bed, pinch and tug on the child to keep them crying and prevent them from sleeping. A midnight witch could be a witch who did not have children in life. It was believed that what she did in life she would continue to do after death. In some places, it was said that Midnight Witch could replace living children with unclean spirits or lifeless objects, especially if the mother had cursed in anger. The Midnight Witch child would not grow and develop properly and may not grow at all, especially if they put a piece of wood in the cradle and the mother thinks it is a live newborn. The real child lives in a spirit world invisible to all others, from which he can be rescued. There are widespread stories in which a young man accidentally meets a girl who was switched as a child in the cradle, mistaking her for an evil spirit. He falls in love with her and marries her, thereby freeing her from the power of unclean spirits. But before that, he must pass a certain test. Many epic tales revolve around this topic, and here is one of them. Once we were young and carefree. One time, they said, who will take a stone out of the bathhouse for a bet? One person went, put his hand into the stone pile, and something grabbed him, saying, marry me and I'll let you go. But if you don't, I won't give you any peace. He came back the next day and said, who's here? And it said to him, go to your mother, get a belt and bring a shirt. He did so put the belt on it, and such a beauty emerged. They got married and went to her parents. Her mother was rocking a baby in a cradle. She came up to her and said, Hello, mother. And her mother answered, Am I your mother? Who have I been rocking for twenty years? She gave birth to her in the bathhouse and left the baby there, and it was exchanged. The girl said, Let me hold the baby. She took it and hid it on the table, and it turned out to be a changeling. Midnight witch are dangerous for those who go to bed at sunset. Such a habit can lead to insomnia and illness. To keep midnight spirits away from the house, windows and doors were closed, and children were not taken out of the house after sunset. Also, empty cradles should not be rocked and left open. Children were never left alone, especially in dangerous places, such as bathhouses, fields, or forests. If a midnight spirit attacked a person in an open field, it could start asking questions, leading the person into conversation. To pass the time and distract the spirit, one had to answer it in detail and for a long time. Talismans in the form of dolls made from rags were helpful in protecting against midnight spirits. These dolls had no faces. The mother had to make the first doll before the child was born, when she was pregnant. No sharp objects were used in making it, and the mother had to keep it in her bed. After the birth of a child, this doll was placed in the cradle to protect it from the evil eye and disease. It was assumed that at the next visit, the midnight spirit would be distracted by the doll and the living baby would not interest it. But if the child still cried and got sick, the mother might decide that the midnight spirit was too strong and cunning and that it's not afraid of anything. Then a special ritual was performed to drive away the spirit. There is a story about this, and now I will tell it to you. Once there lived an old woman in a village. She wasn't a real witch, but she liked to play tricks. She didn't have any children, and when she died, nobody mourned her much. They buried her peacefully because she didn't cause harm to anyone. They buried her and forgot about her. 
After some time, little children in the village started crying at night. As soon as the evening set in, they would howl, whimper, and moan in one house and then in another. In the morning, the neighbors would gather. Their eyes were red and they yawned. They had spent the whole night with their children. At that time, a woman came to visit a man in the village. Apparently, a midnight witch has come to your village, she said to the neighbors. Hasn't a childless witch died here recently? She died, the woman replied. Well, there you go. She's wandering around at night and attacking your children. Whoever among you is the bravest, I'll show you this troublemaker next night. The women turned pale, but one of them finally agreed. She asked the woman to bring a clamp from the stable. They put the children to bed, turned off the light, and huddled in the corner. They covered themselves with the clamp and waited. Closer to midnight, they heard the window frame creak, and a tall woman with black hair, darker than the night, appeared in the room. She stood by the cradle and started to pinch and push the baby. She waited until the child began to whine, and then went to the bassinet where the newborn lie. The mother wanted to protect her child, but the woman didn't let her. Sit down, she said, otherwise the midnight witch will get scared and crush the baby. The midnight witch gave the baby her breast, but for some reason the baby immediately began to cry bitterly and turn away. Her milk is as bitter as wormwood, the woman whispered. Admiring her handiwork, the midnight witch disappeared the same way she came, through the window, and the mother and the woman had a hard time calming their children. Exactly she, Grace, was here, said the young woman who had identified the deceased witch. Oh, damn the power. What a pity we didn't drive a stake between her breasts. We can do without the stake, but we'll have to work hard, said the woman. Let's first take care of your business, then we'll go to the others. And then such a commotion started. The woman made notches on the logs of the wall with a knife, poured boiling water on the comb, cut a strand of hair from the child, and threw it into the boiling pot. What are you doing? asked the young hostess. I'm cutting, steaming, boiling, and driving out the old hag, the midnight witch. Drive her away, steam her, boil her, cut her, the mother echoed, so that she never comes here again, so that she never returns for all eternity. Then they went to other houses, and what do you think? That night was the last time the children cried in the village. After that, they all slept soundly and gave their mother some rest. The midnight witch is not only present in the home, but also in nature. She, along with the noonday witch, belong to the elemental spirits of natural spaces. Those who rest in the field or on the pasture after work in the summer can be attacked by the midnight witch, who can send disease or lethargic sleep. However, the spirit is just and often punishes those who are truly guilty of some crime. That's it. If you like the story about the midnight witch, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos. Thank you for your attention and see you in the new videos.